Each summer, Bay Area college students travel around the world to help startup businesses working to further sustainability and social good. It's not just a vacation. It's not just, you're not a tourist. You are going to help a business who's helping people. We all want everyone to have clean water. We all want everyone to have clean energy. One of the biggest challenges was the cultural and language barrier. We show up and we hit the ground running. There are challenges. There are rough days you're having in the field where kind of nothing is going your way and the ride was delayed an hour and it's hot and you're tired and the mosquitoes are biting you. This is not the rush hour they're used to. Right away, students see that business is happening at the grassroots everywhere, no matter how remote the location. These Santa Clara University students are fellows of the Global Social Benefit Fellowship, whose mission it is to assist social entrepreneurs. The students have these great opportunities to work on sustainable development goals worldwide. Hey! <laughs> Social entrepreneurship draws on the power of business and entrepreneurship to be able to address the needs, especially of people who are poor and of environmental degradation. Social enterprises are across all aspects of the world's issues, but a lot of them are on um, women's empowerment and on combating climate change. The social enterprises are everywhere. East Africa, South Africa, West Africa, uh, the Indian subcontinent, including India itself and, and Nepal. I worked with an enterprise called Empower Generation in Nepal. And Empower Generation recruits women in various communities in rural Nepal and helps provide business skills and technical training, as well as support for these women to have their own independent enterprises selling solar energy products. It's one thing to read about it and another thing to actually be in Nepal and meet these people and like understand the culture in a different context. How students come into that picture is that we help them with whatever they need. They needed videos and so I learned how to be a filmmaker. Our plan was to do a kind of hybrid monitoring and evaluation report and try and quantify how these women's lives have improved since becoming entrepreneurs or how the lives of customers have been improved since owning a solar light product or a solar energy product. Many people in Nepal don't have access to clean energy, so that means that they're dependent on kerosene. And I remember a boy I interviewed who talked about studying with a kerosene lamp and how bugs would be attracted to his face and it was just so difficult for him to study or the fact that it was hard to breathe after two hours of studying with the kerosene lamp. And then he decided to make an investment in the solar light and it changed his world and he was able to study for longer hours. So it was really incredible to hear a story like that of a student like me who had this product that we were working with change his life. I was really happy that Empower Generation really liked the work we did. It's not often that you get to hear from the founder of an organization like that they're proud of your work. They were really happy with the reports we produced and the videos we produced. The Students' Fellowship is based at Santa Clara University's Miller Center for Social Entrepreneurship. What Miller Center does is connect entrepreneurs serving the global poor uh, to campus and campus to those social entrepreneurs in the developing world. The Global Social Benefit Institute Accelerator programs at, at this point have accompanied social enterprises in 65 countries around the world. The Global Social Benefit Institute, GSBI, helps social entrepreneurs grow their business by providing mentors to guide them on key business strategies. A GSBI mentor who's been a successful Silicon Valley executive, she might not necessarily understand what's going to work in Nicaragua or Nepal or Nigeria, but she does understand how you take ideas and get them to scale, and she can help the social entrepreneur discover what's best for his or her own form of impact and how to scale that. After sharing business know-how online for months, mentors meet with the visiting social entrepreneurs in both formal and informal settings on campus. Taking advice from high-tech execs can involve some culture shock. So 
I just want to, first of all, welcome everybody. One of the things mentors try to do is we try to learn as much about your culture as we can. But we have a culture here too. Silicon Valley has a very unique culture. We are very direct. In many of your cultures, we would be considered rude. <laughs> get used to it. <laughs> We're trying to get the most accomplished in the shortest period of time. I'm trying to help. <laughs> when classes resume for the next school year, Ash and Clarissa are back from Nepal. Oh my gosh, how are you? They return to greet a brand new class of GSB fellows who are just starting the coursework to prepare for their own travels. The fellows who have completed their fellowship the prior year, greeting the new fellows, welcoming them, and sharing some advice. Where's your placement? I'm going to uh, Rwanda. Rwanda? Yeah. No, that's awesome. Is that to uh, teach a man to fish? Or no, that's not... How to navigate working in the developing world, how to study different things and think about the world differently. We had spent like two weeks going out and driving out into the fields and village, so it was like... So that connection, we think, is a really vital part of building the, this community of, of leaders uh, who are fashioning a, a more just, humane, and sustainable world. Get ready. Yeah, get ready. That's all you can say. Um, never been to Africa? No, no. It's a really unique group of 18 students who want to make that difference. So we go through two quarters of acad like rigorous academic research. So the first quarter, we learn all about social entrepreneurship, different ways of combating poverty, understanding poverty very holistically. I'm going to go over an ethics worksheet with you and go over that assignment. We dream big in Silicon Valley, in the heart of the world's most entrepreneurial ecosystem, we have resources to project an image of how we can create a more inclusive society in which everyone is able to meet their needs, in which the dignity of all human beings is respected and enhanced. How are you going to adapt when you find out that you can't go to the village that you plan to go to, or that the hotel that you are planning to stay at is actually no longer in business? Whatever it is, you're going to have to adapt. Miller Center really derives its strategic focus from two extraordinary documents, which articulate what needs to be done globally uh, to end poverty and, and protect the planet. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si on climate change and its effects on the poor. We think about preparing these students to address some of the problems that are already happening from climate change, including uh, an increased number of refugees and migrants escaping dire poverty or seeking better lives as a result of climate change. You're also going to be thinking about how your host social enterprises are adapting their own business model. We select the student teams based on the needs of the social enterprise. The matching is really done based on first what does the social enterprise need, then what can these teams of students bring in to that particular project. Most of you need on the 18th. Woo! So it's happening. It's really happening. <laughs> When spring classes are complete, new teams of student fellows are deployed around the world. I went to Ghana. Uh, specifically, I worked with FarmerLine, their uh, startup social enterprise. <laughs> they work on the business to business side by creating a software they call Merge Data that allows big businesses to survey and push out phone calls, voice messages, uh, and other information to farmers with phones. So this, this pond mostly have cut some catfish and uh, tilapia. Their business to farmer side is sort of their social impact side. Mm -hmm. To help farmers by providing content services, agronomics tips, uh, weather forecasting, and market pricing. Also letting them know tomorrow at 10 a.m. it's going to rain. Maybe do or don't plant tonight so that your seeds do get watered or don't wash away. Uh, things like that. Which one do they make more money off of, the cocoa or the, the private? The most surprising thing was how welcomed I felt. I was not expecting that, especially because I felt more welcomed there than I feel here in my home country. 
I was consulting for a social enterprise in Yangon, Myanmar. The Mei Mei app is a maternal health app that has been distributed in Myanmar to mothers to help lower the infant mortality rate in the country. And Cocotech's main mission is to improve the health in Myanmar. So one of the main ways of doing that is through empowering women and education. So I had a great experience filming and meeting a bunch of mothers and babies and filming for the Mei Mei app. Being on an interdisciplinary team was really helpful um, because each one of us had a different expertise that we could bring and be useful for Coco Tech. I definitely want to do something more important with my skills and make a change. At summer's end, students return to Santa Clara to prepare the deliverables requested by the social entrepreneurs. We come back and we have a fall quarter class completing your deliverables, which is kind of what we called the result of your research. These are then presented in writing, on video, and at live events. Career development, vocational discernment is a really big component of this, helping us think of a vision of what we kind of want to do with ourselves, what is our vocation. The fellowship gave me a community of people who value the same things I do. The students expand their imagination to be able to see that how it is possible to make the world a more just, humane, and sustainable place using the entrepreneurial, innovative principles. Fellows start as kids, they come back as young adults. You see the change over this relatively short period of time where their experience really transforms them and their sense of vocation. When you get back, you can't even explain it because it's so beyond uh, sort of comprehension. Um, but it's something that's going to sit with you and live with you forever, and I think forever change you as well. All the fellows were 21, 22, and we know what we stand for. We all want to make this world a better place. There's so many different ways to achieve change within the world that you want to see. You can work at a grassroots communal level to produce the change that really needs to happen in a lot of areas of the world. I, I can't envision myself now going into any sort of career that doesn't have a very strong value on social justice or creating social value. The work with the students as they imagine what they can do with their lives has far exceeded any, anything I, I would have hoped for. They are leaders who are going to make the world a better place and I am so proud of, of every single one of them who I've had the opportunity to work with.